trying to live in the moment at a wrestling show is the hardest thing in the world. You may have seen like, I'm not gonna say real wrestlers, but bigger wrestlers talking about this. I suppose because you got so much in your head and because you're trying to do a performance and because you want to do a good job. Simon so Outboard Aho here. Thank you for joining me as always. And it occurred to me that we haven't done a QA in a few months. And every now and then people say, Simon, do a QA. So I thought, okay, we'll do a QA. You ask me some questions. Some of them have been picked. I don't read them beforehand. I think it's more fun just to go, oh, I can't believe it. Don't know what that noise was. Let's just get on with this stupid video. And we start with Dougie, who says, How do you gauge how many sets of biceps have gone into your back workout without having directly worked them yet? And how do you do this with chest, triceps, and other muscle groups? As a very specific question, I mean, there is no way you're ever going to know, which is why you should just come up with a routine, whether you came up with that yourself or get one from a personal trainer, and stick to that every single week and make sure you're doing progressive overload. And that's all you really need to worry about. For example, if you're doing a push-pull leg split, you're going to, on a pull day, for example, you're going to want to dedicate more time to your back than you are your biceps because your back is a much bigger muscle group. And if you're doing more of a bro split where you're doing back and buys, it's the same kind of a thing. You want to dedicate more time to your back, but you absolutely want to hit your biceps individually. I say that some people don't know. Some people feel like they get enough of a bicep workout just from training their back. Now, do I subscribe to that theory? No, probably not. I think it's always good to do a little bit of isolation work too. But some people have specific arm days as well. So maybe if you're that worried about it, maybe that's the best way to do it. And again, I don't think you get it that wrong as long as you're, you know, you're training intensely. But if you have a separate back day so you can really smash your back and then you have a separate bicep tricep day, there's no way you're not working them enough. But again, the proof is in the pudding. Stick to a plan, do it eight weeks plus, longer than that, 12 weeks plus, and then look at your biceps. Have they grown? Or maybe you need to work them harder if they haven't. And if they have, just keep doing what you're doing. And again, make sure you're always lifting more weight and always training like a crazy person. The crab that got sucked into a Delta pipeline, which I do not believe is his real name. Best advice for when you're feeling discouraged from physical activity or that you're not making enough progress. Well, this is the hardest thing in the world, right? And it's something that we're all going to go through from time to time. Sometimes you are actually making progress, but you can't see it. This happens a lot with people that are losing weight. Say that you're, I don't say morbidly obese, but you're carrying way too much weight. You can lose that first 20, 30 pounds, not easily, but very quickly. And then all of a sudden it slows down and you are still chipping away. But because you're not seeing the same amount of gains or sub gains, whatever we're going to call it, on the scales or looking in the mirror, you think you've hit a wall and you haven't. Now, the best way I think to sort of get around that is to make sure you're enjoying what you're doing, right? Because if you're enjoying what you're doing, even if you are actually correct, and you're not making specific progress, at least you're having fun. And why the hell will we put on this earth? Of course, we have to work, we have to earn money, you have to do this and have to do that. But if you're not having fun and you're not happy, what the hell is the point to begin with? This is obviously different if you're feeling a bit discouraged from physical activity because you don't feel like you're making progress. But at that point, if you are really, really sure that is the case, like the video we did over the weekend, change up your program, change up your routine. There is probably something in that that isn't sparking a fire under you. Whereas if you go back to to something that is, you're more likely to not only go and do it to begin with, but do it in a way that should then result in you evolving and growing and getting all of your gains. So yes, I would say it's probably a little bit of column A, column B, but there's also column C. You're a human being. I'm a human being. We're all human beings. Unless any fish are watching, cods, all the respect to you. But of course, some days you're not going to want to do it. The same, some days you can think nothing better than to eat your pizza. And other days, the thought of eating a pizza wants to make you feel sick. Now, I'm never that person. I want to eat a pizza all the time. But now this kind of stuff happens. Maybe you just need a few days off. Maybe you need a deload week, right? Sometimes you just need to put everything under your bed and go and do something stupid like, I don't know, ride a roller coaster. Bradley says, which do you prefer more? Real actors who've played Batman or voice actors who have done the voice for Batman? Also, who is your favorite performance of Batman, whether it's real acting or voice acting? I wouldn't say I prefer one over the other. Like Kevin Conroy is probably my favorite Batman voice actor, which is a very boring answer, but there's a reason it's a boring answer. And for a long old time, I thought Christian Bale had surpassed Michael Keaton as Batman. But over the years, I've realized it's just those movies in general. Like Batman Begins, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises to me are absolutely fabulous. They are perfect Batman movies. I know some people have criticisms with them. That's perfectly fine. I'm just talking about it from my opinion. And I really, really do like Christian Bale's performance in them. I know that his bat voice has come in for some criticism over the years. I still think I still think Michael Keaton is the best Batman. When you go back and watch Batman and Batman Returns, the only real shame of Batman Returns is that he isn't in it that much. And the focus is very much on the villains. But they're absolutely numbers, you know, one and two to me. And Val Kilmer wasn't terrible. Again, I think that's the anti to what I've just said. I just don't like Batman Forever as a movie. I just don't. I know some people can find some good points in it. And I think in a more... If you'd styled it up a little bit different, I think Val Kilmer would have worked. 
George Clooney probably never should have done Batman, but that conversation has been has happened over and over and again. And there's a bunch of other Batmans we haven't even talked about. But I mean, that's kind of how I see it. But I certainly have a preference between the voice acting and the the real acting. Not the real acting. That's not fair. The, the the real life acting, I suppose. If we're going to get it though, if you haven't seen Batman the animated series and all the wonderful things that Kevin Conroy has done, you really should. They are terrific. Sonny says, I have a few questions. What is your favorite and least favorite exercise and muscle to work? Well, my favorite exercise would be the deadlift, and my least favorite exercise would be lunge. And I don't like working legs. So that would be my, my one I hate the most. Like, I will do it and I don't mind it. But in terms of a scale from love to hate, legs is at the bottom. Do you wish to have your own home gym with power racks, barbells, dumbbells, plates, resistant bands, etc.? Absolutely. If I had the space to have my home gym, I absolutely would do it. Because A, it's just convenient. But also B, you know you're going to be able to get on every single machine you want to because it's your own gym, but I neither have the money or the space. And the most important question is DC or Marvel and which superhero villains are your favorite? Also love your content. Great to see an influencer who doesn't criticize other influencers and remains positive. Well, we have done a little bit of that. Let's not pretend otherwise. It's really difficult because I'm more of a DC guy when it comes to actually reading the comics. I read far more DC than I do Marvel, but that ties into the other part of that question is because I'm a huge Batman guy and I will read every single Batman thread there is going. But I think it's quite clear that the movies, Marvel has DC down, right? DC, I mean, Wonder Woman's pretty good, and I like Suicide Squad, and I'm sure there's some other ones I can't think right now. Well, in Batman, obviously, Batman's always great, but there are a lot of bad ones in there too, a lot of bad ones. So I kind of think they work in balance now, which is great, because ultimately, I just want to enjoy comics. Casasara says, any advice on maintaining weight loss? I've lost 105 pounds, and I'm now in the maintenance phase, as well as trying to build muscle. Love all that you do. Well, thank you very much for that, and also, that's a terrific amount of weight to lose, so fair play to you. I hope you pat yourself on the back every single day. And that is really hard. I tell you the hardest things in the world are, it's not really losing weight or putting on weight or putting on muscle or losing muscle. It's when you get to a point where you're happy and there you try and keep that line in the middle of the graph. And it really is just trial and error. And of course, don't forget, you're going to fluctuate. You cannot help fluctuating because, again, you're a human being. And some days you're going to be a bit more. And some days you're going to be less. Some days your training is going to be great. Some days it's not going to be great. But ultimately, you just kind of need to guess <laughs> until you get to an amount of calories where your weight is steady and you think you look steady and you feel good as well. But it is tremendously hard. Like, to me, that's the hardest thing, which is why I think most people sort of work in bulk cuts, bulk cuts, bulk cuts, or main gaining, whatever you know, you ever you want to call it, where you're doing a little bit a little bits there because at least you know you've got to focus i want the scale to go up i want the scale to go down i want to put a bit more muscle i want to have a bit less body fat but yeah when you try and do maintenance you just have to do the best you can and remember this is not a science i mean it is to a certain point but it's certainly not a science when you choose what to wait eat throughout a day or how much you're going to sleep or how much water you're going to to be holding on to so always give yourself a little bit of a break and also realize you've already done a tremendous job 105 pounds is a terrific achievement no matter who you are enigmatic says what is the achievement you're most proud of outside of fitness anything life related or even hobby wise would be interesting to hear about well i mean the fact that i get to do this and this is essentially my job being a youtuber or a content creator or a host you know whatever the hell you know we, we want to call it i mean absolutely that but also i thought this at the weekend uh, i had three matches this weekend just gone friday saturday sunday and i remember there was a time when i wasn't even training to be a wrestler so the fact that people are now interested enough that they want to put me on their shows and it's kind of just part of my life i think is a, a great advertisement what the hell a great adver <laughs> a great advertisement i'm gonna fall over as my throat kills itself is a great advertisement for deciding what you're passionate about and just going to do it because that's what i did i wanted to do it so just went out there and did it there was no i'm not like a massively skilled professional wrestler i'm just as soon as i decide i want to do something i go and do it and i implore everybody watching this to do the same no matter how crazy it seems you want to be an astronaut just figure out what is the pathway to becoming an astronaut and go do it why can't you be the next astronaut unless you're stupid like me i wouldn't be able to be an astronaut but someone's got to be the next astronaut it could be you ryland says what are your thoughts on Mikel arteta and arsenal so far this season love your videos by the way keep up the good work thank you my friend uh well i think he's doing a great job at the moment i mean we're fifth on the same points as west ham if somehow liverpool lost uh, whatever matches they've got coming up they've got everton tomorrow tonight even and arsenal win on thursday they'd be like three points two points behind liverpool whatever it is so given that we were bottom of the league after three games i think it's pretty damn good i really like Mikel arteta i like the way he speaks especially after games i think there's real worth in what he comes out with but i still think it's early days i still think we have a very young squad i still think we probably need to add a few names to that squad and we have to allow them to build right it's a lot like fitness trying to tie it in in the most cheesy way possible but maybe sort of two three years down the line we will be in a much better place where we are now if we can hold on to these players because they will have gelled and we've had like a core of the team but i don't think we're anywhere near chelsea liverpool or man city which is 
Well, I mean, it's kind of a shame, but at the moment, if we finish fourth, to me, after the last few years, that would be a massive achievement. But I think everything is pointing in the right direction. And again, compared to what it was, I'm fine with it. Josh says, other than the gym, wrestling and other physical activities, what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Well, I don't have any spare time, <laughs> but that's absolutely fine. I choose to have no spare time. I mean, everything I do, essentially, that you can see takes up a hell of a lot of time. So I suppose it's just seeing my girlfriend, my very, very supportive and very, very lovely girlfriend who completely understands this madness who I, I've thrown myself into. And like I say, just supports me every step of the way. So whenever I have any time not doing this madness, I like to see her. Ben says, how long after you started wrestling training did you make your debut? I started a few months ago and loving every session. That's always good to hear. Keep it up, Ben. Keep smashing it. I hope those bumps aren't killing you too much. I waited way too long. Like I almost, I almost trained for like almost two years. It was just shy of two years. But that's because I, really, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was like, well, how do I get a match? You know, how do you get booked on a show questions i should have been asking but very sillily i didn't but i think most people after well it was going to depend on the individual individual but i know people that trained for six months and got on a show some people have done for a year but i think it, as long as you have some competence you know when you are doing training i think it's good to try and get a match under your belt as soon as possible because it's like hitting the reset button right you really have to re rethink well how do i do this and how do i do that and how do i take everything in training because training is nothing like a real a real match environment so you know, if you're a few months in, give it a few more months. You talk to your coaches as well. You know, if they're reputable trainers, they will know if you're... They're not going to throw you in at the deep end, essentially. But, I mean, there is no answer to that. I don't want to discourage you. You could be a Kurt Angle. I, you know, you could be absolutely amazing. And if so, have one right now. Gavin, best advice when going for a one rep max? Warm up. Jamie says, hey, Simon, I'd like to ask. Let's say I actually do manage to reach out and grab that dangling carrot and I achieve the look I was going for. What do I do with my diet and weight sessions? Maintain them where I'm currently at. Could I take my foot off the gas a bit? Thanks. Well, no, never take your foot off the gas a bit. I mean, people do that all the time, especially they look in the mirror, right? So many people do this. They look in the mirror and they actually like what they see, which is a rarity. So do you know what the first thing they do is? They go have a pizza, they go have a burger, and they go have some nachos and cheesecakes. They think, well, I've achieved all my dreams. Now I can eat whatever you want. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a cheat meal, but a lot of people fall off the diet wagon straight away, again, when they kind of appreciate what they're seeing back in the mirror. So again, maintenance is the hardest thing in the world we've talked about, but mainly never take your foot off the pedal. No, effort, work, and achievement always have to be the concrete and the foundation of everything that you do and everything else comes after that. And it's not a guarantee. Without all that stuff, you ain't got no fuel. Pingu, if only it was actually Pingu. Which wrestler do you think has the best promo skills, currently active and of all time? Also, do you have a specific go-to song you listen to at the start of a workout? Well, I think probably MGF is the best right now, or Kevin Owens, I really like him. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody else, but they're the first two that come to mind. Punk is always good, Punk is brilliant. And Brian Danielson, he's wonderful. See, I'm just naming people now. I mean, The Rock's gotta be in there of all time. Stone Cold Steve Austin's gotta be in there of all time. And there'll be a bunch of other people. I mean, Flair. I mean, there's so many good ones. And it all depends on your taste. Of Terry Funk. Terry Funk was always good because you totally believed every single word that he said. But like, this guy's absolutely crazy. And no, I don't have a, a workout song that I go to. Mostly I just get in the gym and I hit shuffle. I hit shuffle and I see what's come up. Sometimes I listen to podcasts, which sounds crazy. And I probably do admit that it, it probably pumps you. It does pump you up less. But sometimes that's just what I need. I like to shape the gym around my mood. Dino Punch says, best way to gain weight or muscle. I've always had a hard time gaining weight and muscle. And I'd love to hear your opinion if there's a good, healthy way to do it. Eat. Nobody eats enough. Now, I'm not saying you have to go crazy. You don't have 5,000 calories plus. But so many people say, oh, I can't put any weight. I can't put any muscle. And you say, what are you eating? So well, I get up and have some toast. Then I have a sandwich for lunch. And before bed, I just have a random dinner. Like, that's not enough food. You're not getting enough protein in. You're not getting enough nothing in. Doesn't mean you eat a bunch of crap. But eating is the best way to do it. But just do it healthily. Like, don't add 500 calories. Add 100 calories here and there. See what happens. If you start putting on too much fat, you're going to have to address it and things like that. It takes time. It takes forever. Just be sensible with it and you know understand that it, you know, if you are genuinely a skinny dude and you need to put on weight and muscle you've got to feed all of that it's got to come from somewhere i do not advocate doing this but when i first started getting into it a long old time ago i remember eating chicken and rice and pushing chicken into my mouth because i just wanted to get the calories in again i don't think it's a good idea I think it probably helped me a little bit because it built me somewhat of a base. But I think there's far more information out there now that would help you do this as opposed to the nonsense that I was doing. Juggernaut says, hey, Simon, love the content. Would just like to know who is your favorite artist or music group? Metallica. 
I mean, there's so many videos on this channel. You can't love it that much. I'm joking. I'm kidding. I don't care. You don't have to watch every single video. Metallica. Metallica are my favorite band. I love them. They transcend music as far as I'm concerned because I'm a very weird chap. Todd's Truth says, how did it feel winning your first wrestling title and how surreal was it holding the belt at the end of the match? Well, it's a weird thing. It feels better a few days afterwards because... At the time, it, like, trying to live in the moment at a wrestling show is the hardest thing in the world. You may have seen, like, I'm not going to say real wrestlers, but bigger wrestlers talking about this. I suppose because you've got so much in your head and because you're trying to do a performance and because you want to do a good job and because I don't have that much experience. I think that's something you learn as well. Much as you get better at doing promos and you get better at doing matches and you get better at doing entrances, learning to take it all in, I think, is a skill all in itself. And it does happen from time to time. But that was one of those things where I didn't even... It wasn't until days later when I kind of looked down at it and I was like, well, that's the most surreal thing ever. But it's brilliant. It's wonderful. And some people go, oh, you're a mark for yourself. It's not about being a mark for yourself. It's that somebody somewhere decided, oh, we should make Miller our champion because I think that would benefit our brand. And that is a wonderful pat on the back as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, it is, it is damn cool. There's something about wrestling. It gets in your skin. And this is why I tell everyone who is a fan to at least try it. If it's not for you, don't worry about it. Knock it on the head. But for anybody that is able to have a few matches, all the weird emotions and feelings you get afterwards... Some of the best stuff in the world. Anastasios says, how do you rate your genetics from a bodybuilding view? Bang average. Kyle, Simon, would you rather only be able to work out one arm the rest of your life or one leg the rest of your life? One arm. I don't need no leg. Joshua, the golden question. If my proxy Nick Comoro does face you on probably a dark taping, is it the initial start to your journey to becoming all elite? I mean, who knows? I've said this before. Would that be a once in a lifetime experience? Absolutely. And if it led to anything else, would I do backflips all around my house? Of course I would. You don't say no to amazing opportunities. Andrew says, hello, Simon. My question is, what car do you drive? Not very relevant, but I find myself wondering. I think a Ford Focus. <laughs> what a strange guess. Miller drives a Ford Focus. Well, I'm going to ruin your dreams. I drive the stupidest car ever, as everybody tells me all the time. I drive a very, very small Volkswagen up. And the reason I do this is, one, it's dirt cheap, and I drive all around the country for professional wrestling. So why would I want a gas guzzler? That would be absolutely insane. And two, it's a car that I bought now like six years ago, five years ago, six years ago, a long time ago. And I'm very much of the mindset, this car still works. Why would I get another car? That's just how I see cars. I'm not a car guy. I totally understand people that are into cars and, and they love them. But it is tiny and it is uncomfortable for me to sit in. But I guess I'm a massive cheapskate. Ian says, are you still in the band, Simon? If so, where can we see you? I'm always going to be in the band. I mean, we're not active at the moment per se because uh, you know a couple of the members have far more important things going on. But yes, MG and the Juggernaut, I'm sure will reunite soon. It's one of my favorite things to do when I miss it. Arrow says, what do you do when you don't feel like going to the gym? <laughs> I always want to go to the gym. And that's that. Thank you very much for asking your questions. I do appreciate it. We will try and do another one soon if you want that. If not, we'll never do it again and you'll never hear from me and I'll just vanish into the abyss. But otherwise, thank you as always. I appreciate you engaging and have a great day. Also, please do like the video, share the video and subscribe. Get the bell ding ding. So you know other videos are going live. There is another video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Grillmind.com forward slash Simon. Use code Simon. Get 10% off all of their stuff. Greg New Sets Power 13 Cookbook. Use code Simon15. Get 15% off. It's all in the description below. Click those links. On Instagram and Twitter at Simon Miller 316. Patreon.com forward slash Simon 316. Simon.bigcartel.com for merchandise. I'm on Cameo if you'd like some kind of birthday greeting or a Christmas greeting or a Hanukkah greeting. Happy Hanukkah to all my Jewish friends. And that's that. Let's draw a line under it and I'll talk to you soon.